In this lesson, we're going to investigate geometric sequences. This is titled Module 1 because there will be a second lesson where we just solve some more problems. Uh, a geometric sequence is a sequence found by multiplying the previous term by a constant, r, called the common ratio. So if you look at this example, the list of numbers, 2, 6, 8, 54, 162, it is a geometric sequence because the common ratio is 3. Or in other words, as you move from one term to another, uh, you are multiplying by 3, and that pattern is followed continuously. Uh, as far as the formula goes, the general term, uh, so to define any term of a geometric sequence, Tn of a geometric sequence is defined by the formula the general term equals the first term times the ratio to the exponent of the number of the term minus 1. And you can look here and see what each of those values or each of those elements is um, is called or what it, what it is. Um, another thing that you need to investigate or know is how to calculate the common ratio. So the common ratio or r of a geometric sequence is defined by the formula r is equal to the value of any term divided by the value of the term before it. Uh, so in other words, all you do is divide any term by the previous term if you want to find out the common ratio. Uh, let's look at a, a few examples here. So just investigate geometric sequences. This question says, for each se sequence, determine if it is geometric. If it is, state the values of r, the, uh, the general term, and the eighth term, or t subscript 8. Uh, if you look at this particular list of numbers, it's, it's alternating from a positive to a negative to a positive to a negative. So that seems to imply that the constant that's being multiplied here is a negative value. And if you look at the integer part, uh, it is doubling. So in fact, our common ratio here, this is a geometric sequence. We're multiplying every term by negative 2 to get to the next term, and that's a pattern. So in this particular case, the value of r would be negative 2. The general term would be defined as so you could define this uh, as tn is equal to term 1, which is a value of 5, times r, which in this case is negative 2, to n minus 1. So that would be the uh, value of the general term. Now if it says determine the value of the eighth term, all this means the eighth term is going to be 5 times negative 2 to the power of 8 minus 1, or in other words, to the power of 7. Uh, you could do this in multiple steps on your calculator. Just be careful about doing the order of operations correctly. Uh, I'm going to do this in a couple of steps. First of all, do exponents. So if I do uh, make sure negative 2 is in brackets, negative 2 to the power of 7, and then times the first term 5. So that would be neg negative 640. So the eighth term in this list would be negative 640. You could also, uh, if you would like to list out the numbers, this one's not too long to do and figure out what the eighth term is because we would just follow the pattern. All right, let's look at the next example. Uh, the next example has these numbers, 2, 6, 18, 36. Uh, what we could do is just look at the pattern and see if it continues. If you find out what the common ratio here is, it looks like they're tripling. Uh, so we're timesing by 3. So times by 3, sorry, times by 3, that should say 3 there. Uh, but what you'll notice is this last one is actually times by 2. So in this particular case, is this a geometric sequence? Uh, no, it's absolutely not geometric. In fact, this doesn't seem to follow a pattern whatsoever. So let's move to the next one. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult when we deal with fractions or reducing uh, sequences. So let's see what happens here. We're going from 5 to 10 thirds to 20 ninths to 40 20 sevenths. Uh, a little bit more difficult to find out the common ratio. So one way we could do that is common ratio is any term divided by its previous term. So if I do 10 thirds divided by 5, that will give me what the common ratio may be. So 10 thirds divided by 5 is equivalent to 10 thirds times the reciprocal, which is 1 fifth, which would be 10 fifteenths or 2 thirds. Uh, let's investigate a few more common ratios. Let's just look and see if that pattern is continuously followed. If I look at this guy here and divide it, uh, the common ratio from 10 thirds to 20 ninths would be 20 ninths divided by 10 thirds. So if we multiply by the reciprocal, we would have 20 ninths times 3 over 10, which is equivalent to uh, 60 over 90, which does reduce to 2 thirds. So it appears like our common ratio is 2 thirds. Uh, let's just try one more. So in this particular case, uh, the common ratio here would be 40 over 27 divided by 20 over 9. 
And if we multiply by the reciprocal, we'd have 40 over 27 times 9 over 20. And that would become 360 over 540. And that does, in fact, reduce to 2 thirds. Uh, so this is a geometric sequence. The values are getting smaller because the common ratio is less than 1. Uh, so in this particular case, our ratio, common ratio, is 2 thirds. Our general term could be defined by, so general term, Tn is equivalent to the first term times the common ratio times n minus 1. There's the definition of our general term. And if we would like to find our eighth term, uh, we would do this. T8 is equal to 5 times 2 thirds to the 8 minus 1. So that would be uh, 5 times 2 thirds to the 7. Uh, you may have to use fractions to solve this for the entire thing. Uh, so 2 thirds to the 7th you'd have to do actually by hand because 2 thirds times 2 thirds times 2 thirds times 2 thirds etc 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 would be equivalent to 2 to the 7th which is 128 over 3 to the 7th which is 2187. So it would be 5 times 128 over 2187. That would be your fifth term if you'd like to do it as a fraction. So that would end up being 640 over 2187. Uh, that would be our eighth term. Or if we would like to, we could just use decimals, and you'll see that's going to be equivalent. If I do 2 thirds to the seventh, so using brackets, so you may have to do this by fractions or not. Uh, to the seventh, and then times that by five, I get 0 0.2926, etc. So, and you'll see that that is equivalent to 0 0.2926, uh, etc. Uh, so, if I take 640 and divide it by 2187, you'll see that it's the same answer. Uh, it's just one way I did the exponents using um, fractions, and the other one I did exponents um, just with my calculator. Let's look at one more example. Just investigate a little bit more deeply. Uh, this question says, state the values of the common ratio, the first term and the second term for the geometric sequence where the third term is 54 and the sixth term is negative 1,458. So if we kind of look at the pattern, I would suggest not using the formula in this one. So if the third term is 54 and the sixth term is 1,000, Negative 1,458, excuse me. Uh, we're looking for the first term and the second term. So essentially, uh, if we wanted to apply both of these <coughs> numbers to the formula, or to the general formula, if I wanted to apply 54 to this formula, uh, it would look like this. Tn, which is 54 in this case, is equal to T1 times R times 3 minus 1. So in other words, 54 is equal to T1 R squared. Uh, if we applied negative 1,458 to the same formula, we would have negative 1,458 is equal to the first term times the common ratio times 6 minus 1. In other words, negative 1,458 times term 1 ratio to the fifth. Um, in this particular case, you could use both of these and solve using a system of equations to solve for the common ratio. I would suggest to do this more of a visual or um, a common way. To go from 54 to 1, 000, negative 1,458, we have to multiply by three common ratios. So times ratio, times ratio, times ratio, because it's they differ by three terms. So in other words, to go from 54 to negative 1,458, um, this is just using, maybe I'll just call it the intuition model. Um, <clears throat> 54 times the ratio cubed is equivalent to negative 1,458. So if we want to figure out what the ratio is, which might be useful, we'd divide by 54. So we'd have that the ratio cubed is equal to, I believe, negative 27. Yeah. Uh, and now to solve for the ratio, we would take the cubed root, because the opposite of cubing something is the cubed root. And the ratio is equal to the cubed root, which would be here of negative 27. Or in other words, it would be negative 3. So our ratio is negative 3. So uh, if in order to go from one term to the next, we multiply by negative 3, to go the reverse direction, we would divide by negative 3. So to apply this to the order, 
we would, to go from term 3 to term 2, we'd divide by negative 3, which would get me that term 2 is equal to 54 divided by negative 3, which is equivalent to negative 18. And term 1 would be equal to negative 18 divided by negative 3, which is equivalent to 6. So you can kind of see what the pattern here would be.